Hey folks, Lex here at Board at Work, and we're going to be doing a full review of the Huawei P10. We were in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress where we got the device and did a brief hands-on and unboxing of it, but we have taken it through its paces and definitely got some hands-on time with it further, and we've walked away rather impressed with Huawei's next generation of the P9. Uh, this is going to be a device which I now call the iPhone 7 of the Android world from a hardware standpoint, from a functionality standpoint. And just generally, just from a user case standpoint, this is a very nice device, high quality device from Huawei. They invested a lot of time into the design and just some quirks that kind of help the end user. And we're gonna take a dive into it and see whether or not it can be your next buy in the growing market of Android devices. On the front end of the P10, you have a 5.1 inch HD display. Uh, don't let the lower resolution fool you though, guys. It's a beautiful, vibrant, crisp display. At the bottom, you do have a type C charging port, a single stereo speaker, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is nice to see from Huawei. They kind of stuck to their guns and did not follow the industry. On the side, you do just have the SIM card tray, uh, which does house the micro SD card slot as well. The top end is very clean, um, which is included with the ceramic surrounding, very smooth. On the right side, you have the dedicated power button and volume rockers. The power button is color coded with a red dye, a very nice design cue, as well as a grip to it. So it really won't be hard to find it. The back has the Huawei's new diamond cut back end, uh, which is meant to give you better grip, uh, hold less smudges, and just overall add to the design of this beautiful blue color. Um, overall, the design of the P10 is very, very nice. Now, if you got more close up, you would see it's very reminiscent to an iPhone at the bottom end, but I'm okay with that. Uh, Huawei did a very nice job with the P10. Packed inside this bad boy is a Curin 960 chipset custom by Huawei. It's an octa-core processor that has four cores running at 2.4 gigahertz, and then four lower cores that run at 1.8 gigahertz. This thing is a beast. It is definitely up to par with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 821, if not better. I've had much better use case with this processor than any other one. Um, the Mali G71 GPU with the Vulkan API makes games and overall UI fluidity uh, just top notch. This thing runs like an iPhone, so it kind of leads credence, credence to the fact that I said it's the iPhone 7 of the Android world. Uh, now running this UI, um, or this phone is the Emotion UI, uh, which is uh, over time gotten much, much better. Uh, now on the P9, I was not a fan of it at all. Uh, seeing it again on the P10, I was a little bit wary of how much I would like it, but it is a great UI uh, with custom themes and they've kind of dialed down their influence on the Android uh, Nougat. Um, this also includes Google Assistant uh, since it is running Android Nougat. So um, it runs almost similar to a pure Android device running stock Android in terms of speed and efficiency. It also includes four gigs of RAM, uh, 64 gigs of built-in storage, plus the expandable micro SD card slot that's with the SIM tray. Now the Plus model has about six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Either way, they're both expandable and more than efficient for most users. Um, the battery is a little bit smaller than expected. It's 3,200 milliamp, but with the design, I'm willing to take that hit. It also includes supercharged fast charging, which is a mouthful, but pretty much makes this thing a beast for, you know, if you're on the go and you need to charge it up for 15 minutes, It'll last for a couple couple more hours if need be. One of the highlights of the P10 is its dual camera list system. One being 20 megapixels, the other being 12 megapixels monochrome sensor. Aperture being at 2.2, includes OIS. The collaboration with Leica Optics makes this an enhanced camera with a bevy of features like laser detection, autofocus, dual LED tone flash, things along those lines, but the camera quality itself is much improved from the P9 in my opinion, especially in low light conditions. Uh, general features include geotagging, touch face, HDR, panoramic views, does record 40, uh, 4K at 30 frames per second, and then 1080p at 60 frames per second. The video is very, very smooth. Uh, now, one of the highlights is also the UI used to operate the camera. This is a very enhanced user experience. Now, that you can use it stock. You don't have to really go into the manual settings, but it has a bevy of features that will enhance your experience with the camera. Um, now, again, as I mentioned, the 12 megapixel camera with a dual LED system is monochrome. So the black and white with this device would be different from a general filter. So they do include those things, but they enhance the ability to make things better with digital being the focus. In use, one of my favorite features is also the bokeh effect or the wide angle viewing of the camera. Uh, due to the dual lens system, they can create this effect where the background is blurred and then the front end is focused or the foreground. And that is the bokeh effect. Now the iPhone kind of is marketed that way, but it doesn't do it as well 
uh, in my case, or at least I believe so, in terms of devices like the P10. Uh, you gotta check the samples, you can go on our website, you can check the link below in the description. This thing takes amazing photos. Uh, now, when I was in MWC, I legit just took it out in the wild and did no editing, no filtering, no none whatsoever other than the bokeh effect. Check it out, guys. Let us know what you think. Huawei has made some design changes in the P10 from the P9, uh, one glaring one being its fingerprint sensor. It was placed on the back with the P9. It's now placed on the front, and it is static. It's very similar to the iPhone, if you ever felt the one on the iPhone 7, um, but it does add some different functionality uh, than the previous fingerprint sensor. Some cool new ways you can use navigation with the fingerprint sensor throughout the operating system is tapping once for the back, uh, double tapping for home, and swiping left or right for the multitasking section. Um, I did find this to be rather inconsistent, uh, so I opted not to use it. Um, as you can see in the display there, you can switch between the on-screen key buttons and then the fingerprint sensor. Um, now I tried it out, I switched back to the home, uh, to the virtual screen buttons, just because for, for use case it's more consistent. And I don't think double tapping is necessary for going home. I believe they should have switched that. Hopefully with a update, you can change um, those kind of sequences of how it works. But for right now, it's an option and it's great to see. Battery life on the Huawei P10 is rather disappointing. Now it does include super fast charging, which is nice to grab and go. And it's just a feature set of flagship Android devices. But in use, I maybe push it to its max about four and a half hours of screen time. But any type of heavy use, you're gonna see that drop uh, drastically. Um, the more disappointing aspect of the battery life is the idle. I remember going to bed about 20% battery life, waking up to my phone being dead. Um, and that's just not acceptable in 2017. I believe this is an optimization issue, it's nothing to do with the processor or battery. Um, I think Nougat with her new Emotion UI just hasn't been fine tuned. So hopefully with an update, Huawei fixes that, but battery life is not in highlight. That is gonna sum up my take on the Huawei P10. The complete package of this device is a glaring standout. Um, there are crazy camera specs, crazy hardware design, uh, great software, and with the Android Nougat. Battery life is somewhat lackluster, but I see that improving with software updates. Uh, the speed of the current processor is definitely a highlight as well. This is a complete package Android device. Now, the only glaring issue may be the price. Uh, depending on what model you get, this month goes for about six. 49 US dollars or 700 depending on your location uh, and then the plus model is somewhere around the 750 to 800 range but if you can muster the price this is a flagship premium handset um, Android is finally coming to fruition with coming on par with devices like the iPhone in terms of consistency and use in my opinion um, and this is just another way of Huawei showcasing that they're giving Samsung a run for their money if the S8 is not what it's supposed to be I see the next iteration of Huawei devices taking over this is Lex from Board at Work. Comment in the sections below. Be sure to like the video and always enjoy your entertainment.